Dawn's reflections on a still pool, the delicate impression of a wildflower, a sliver of silver water hidden in a forest glade, the remnants of autumn and the austere attraction of winter. The beauty of nature moves us all. It makes the places we live and play more attractive, more valuable. But all too often, creating those places takes a terrible toll on natural beauty. Nature is often fragile, and when the heavy equipment needed to build our homes and apartments moves recklessly through a natural area, that beauty can be destroyed forever. But that doesn't have to happen. With vision, planning, and teamwork, it's possible to conserve the natural beauty of a site and still create places for people to live and play and everybody wins. The developer, the community, the resident, the land itself, when a commitment is made to building with nature. This is the story of two developers in Indiana who made a commitment to building with nature. The results are C.P. Morgan's Williamson Run community near Indianapolis and the Buckingham Company's Bradford Ridge apartment complex in Bloomington both winners of Global Relief for New Community Awards, a program sponsored by American Forests and the National Association of Home Builders to recognize conservation efforts during development. And both are models of how to create communities in harmony with nature. We were attracted by the beauty of the site and weren't detracted by the obstacles of, of uh, taking that, that site and developing it into uh, a community like we have have done, um, we actually saw the, the obstacles of taking a, a densely wooded site and making it, uh, preserving it, enhancing it, uh, we, we saw those obstacles as a challenge that we really couldn't talk, uh, to, uh, walk away from. Building with nature is more complicated. It takes more time and more planning, which may cost more initially. So why should a developer conserve the natural areas on a site? One important reason is that people want to live there. A recent survey conducted for home builders found that natural open spaces and best pocket wilderness areas, along with hiking, jogging, and bike paths, are among the most desirable and saleable features for a new community. How long has it been since you've back on the nature walk, Kelsey? I think it's important for our, ch our children to be able to experience some of this nature. And we, uh, we spend time on the nature trail we walk around and try to identify different kinds of animals we've found uh, snakes we've seen uh, muskrats and turtles and frogs and I think it's good for the kids to have that so close to their home there's no question that having these woods so near to our home was a, a uh, major factor in this building here with CP Morgan at, at Williamson run where's the other birdhouse just about three or four weeks ago um, my daughter was sitting in the dining room looking out the window and, and my wife was working on the computer and she said that uh, she saw three deer in the backyard. My wife didn't believe her at first and uh, when she kept pestering her she looked out and sure enough there were uh, three deer out there, two, two does and a fawn. And uh, that was quite an exciting experience for uh, my child to, to actually get a, to see a piece of the zoo in her own backyard. The first steps toward creating that experience are taken long before any earth is moved or any designs are drawn. To successfully build with nature, you must carefully plan every detail of the project. That planning begins with an environmental analysis where the developer, architect, engineer, and resource expert walk the site, noting how to best conserve the natural setting. And that, and that, again, is, is, uh, is key to the success of the project, obviously, in terms of what's left and how does it read. Does it read wooded? Does it read uh, disturbed? And, and it's uh, planning at this stage in terms of the things that you're pointing out, whether it's the amount of excavation that needs to be done, whether it's the siting of the particular buildings, whether it's the initial site plan layout bill. Uh, all of that depends on all of us to try to anticipate and make some contingencies now instead of being on site at the time that the machinery is running and trying to deal with those problems as they arise. Pre-planning is the key. Exactly. 
The region of Forester is an important part of the team that develops a site in the woods, if you will, is because he generally understands what the trees need, what's realistic and what's unrealistic in terms of encroachment. And in some cases, because there's no alternative, we have to put a utility or we have to put a road or whatever in a certain area, and certain compromises need to be made. And only someone with the training to understand what uh, is doable and what is not can you ex or expect a successful result. To me, the most important thing to bear in mind when developing a wooded area is not tree preservation, but tree conservation. That's not to say that we don't preserve trees. We do indeed. But we conserve the forest. And part of tree conservation is not only preserving what is there, but it's adding to on an ongoing basis. So forest conservation is not only saving what we start with, but adding to it with additional plantings as you go along. Areas of special interest in the environmental analysis should be streams and wetland areas, wildlife habitat, the topology and soil conditions, and stands of mature trees that can be left undisturbed. Understanding the site's environment means that plans can be made with the environment in mind. Planning is critical to developing the site. If you know all the, the goals um, up front and the ideas that the developer wants to achieve, and work closely with, with the developer, the architect, um, and, and then the various utilities um, up front, go over all the problems, and then try and solve them in advance, and get that into the plan up front, uh, presents a, a, we can solve that problem more effectively and, uh, and, and get it so that it works smoothly in the future. So Paul, could you maybe, or Christy, explain to us the uh construction process or construction sequencing that would be required so that we could make sure that we had the right soils there and that also the elevation of that shelf is appropriate to create a wetland. Once the first draft of the plans are drawn, a crucial meeting takes place. At Schneider Engineering in Indianapolis, all of the people involved in the creation of the Williamson Run community, engineers, landscape architects, utility representatives, and natural resource consultants, meet with the developer to look over those initial plans and share their insights and their requirements. It's a vital step in the planning process. Well, it matters a great deal, and, and we need to be brought in at the beginning to eliminate or reduce future problems. If our engineers can be involved with the planners of the development, we can locate where the facilities should be. Uh, we can help plan where our easements should be where the facilities should be located, and ultimately that will result in lower impact, less impact, and, and less contact on our part in the future with the residents. It, bringing in the different utility companies so we can lay out the utility corridors is very useful. Uh, we, can, we can work with them in locating the, the, the power lines, the gas lines, and so on, and even the lines that go directly to the homes. Uh, working with the landscape architects and, and biological type of people, they can, they can help us determine what areas are the best suitable to, uh, to, re to remain. So we try to stay out of those areas. It's good for us to get involved um, at the onset just so that we can hear all the other issues, understand the utilities and the infrastructure, and know what kind of site constraints, um, things that, that the other that the rest of the um, design team is dealing with. I think what I would do would be to, to, to develop an educational program and emphasize the erosion control that would come down or the uh, soil that would wash down if we were to remove the material. Creating a team early in the planning process helps solve environmental problems before the construction begins. But the team's work does take time and money. But it's time and money well worth the cost. It does take more time, it may cost money up front, but in the long run it saves both you, the developer, as well as the homeowner money. And the encouragement for economic sense is that we're able to sell these homes faster. We're able to get a, gain a premium on the home sites as well as the homes because of the natural beauty of the neighborhood. It may take a few months or years longer to get the project through the planning process, may cost some extra money through that process, but in the long run, when the project is all said and done, we find it to be more profitable. And that profitability is available 
not only to developers of high-end single-family homes. These are basically uh, uh, working families, uh, wage-earning families that, uh, that live in this uh, apartment. Um, Kenneth Seabree is the architect with, with who designed the Bradford Bridge children. Apartments to meet um, federal affordable housing the, guidelines. The, the preservation of the, the ecology or the preservation of the existing topography and the preservation of the trees is not a tremendously expensive thing to accomplish. It just takes a little extra planning. I do believe it, it, uh, the, uh, the livability and, and the environment that, that our residents are enjoying uh, provides a stability to our resident base so we have fewer turnovers, we have better resident retention, and we have happier residents in general. So those are all kind of intangibles. Uh, but they do add to a better economic performance for this community, and, and I believe that we have been able to generate uh, value that exceeds the investment we made. All of the efforts to create a more beautiful and more profitable community can be undone in a few minutes if the construction crew is not made part of the team. It's important in your construction schedule to put time in there for preparing the site for the entrance of contractors. We want to put up snow fencing to protect sensitive areas. We'd like to have on-site pre-construction meetings to explain our goals to all of the contractors, the bulldozer operator as well as his boss, all of the goals for site development before they enter onto the property. It's important to schedule that time in. Again, it doesn't take long for a bulldozer to do damage and to just destroy an area of trees or a sensitive natural habitat you've been spending months or years planning to save, that area could be destroyed within a morning. So it's important in the construction phase to do effective planning and again to communicate and coordinate those goals effectively. It does no good for a developer to build with nature if the utility companies cannot deliver their services without damaging the natural areas. That's why utility needs must be considered in the planning stages and why it's also vital that utility rights of way are laid out on the ground during initial excavations. It helps the utility companies do their job with minimal damage to the natural areas. The only time that we have to deal with the tree is if it creates a problem for us. And we don't want those problems. It costs our customers money. It costs everybody involved some type of expense. And we try to eliminate those. If by working with developers and builders and others in the community, we can reduce or eliminate some of those problems, then everybody wins. Everybody wins when communities are built in natural settings. Some of the developers that we work with, they have this tendency to want to go in and completely scrape the site, rape the land, and put in whatever they, they feel would fit the, the, their site constraints. Um, if they actually work with what's existing, um, it, it ends up being a better product in the end. It looks natural. It has, you have more natural terrain to work with. I would highly recommend getting in to looking at the site and its natural conditions and using those as opportunities instead of seeing them as constraints. And taking advantage of those opportunities can be summed up with three words. Vision, planning, and teamwork. Cooperation from your team members. Outline your goals, outline your, your, your desires, uh, and work with everybody involved from the city planners to your, your architects, your engineers, your contractor needs to be involved, your excavation contractor needs to be involved. Hire a, an environmental consultant uh, and, uh, and approach this, because uh, everybody has, has value in the process, um, and, uh, and take the comments and proceed accordingly and you can, you can develop a, a community that's not gonna, it's not gonna really burden you with costs if you look at the benefits also. And there's a more intangible reward as well when you've helped build with nature. I like to see what I've been able to accomplish and by driving into a community that I've worked on and seeing a big stand of trees that was saved and seeing the creek running through there that's left in its natural state is, is very rewarding. For information about ordering the Building with Nature video and booklet, write to Building with Nature, Post Office Box 814, Carmel, Indiana, 46032.
The Building with Nature video and booklet were produced through the cooperation of the following partners. Citizens for Green Space, the Indiana Urban Forest Council, Hoosier Heartland Resource Conservation and Development Council, C.P. Morgan Company Incorporated, and the Buckingham Companies. This program was made possible with funding and technical assistance from the USDA Forest Service, Urban Forestry Conservation Fund, and the Urban Forestry Technology Transfer Fund, the Indiana Department of Natural Resources Division of Forestry, Indiana Michigan Power, Indianapolis Power and Light Company, Northern Indiana Public Service Company, PSI Energy Incorporated, Southern Indiana Gas and Electric Company, Muncie, Delaware Environment Enhancement Project, Schneider Engineering Incorporated, Bolin, Meyer, Gibson and Associates Incorporated, and the Indiana Chapter of the American Society of Landscape Architects. The Global Relief for New Communities Award Program is sponsored by American Forests and the National Association of Home Builders to recognize developers on outstanding environmental conservation efforts during development. Information about the program and how to order the book Building Greener Neighborhoods, Trees as Part of the Plan can be obtained by writing Global Relief for New Communities, Care of American Forests, Post Office Box 2000, Washington, D.C., 20013, or call 202-667-3300, extension 236. Or write to Land Development Services, the National Association of Home Builders, 1201 15th Street Northwest, Washington, D.C., 20005, or call 800-368-5242, extension 351. This program is a production of Photosynthesis.